June is Men's Mental Health Month. It's meant to remind us that it is for anyone to struggle with their mental health and challenge the social stigmas that often keep men from taking care of their mental well-being. Joining us live this morning to discuss those challenges is mental health expert Dr. Kojo Sarfo. Dr. Sarfo, we always love having you on this show. Good morning. Good morning, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, let's start off here with what are some of the biggest mental health struggles that men often face? Well, so for men, you know, a lot of the mental health struggles that we face revolves around what we do, you know, in our everyday lives, right? So work and finances. A lot of uh, men uh, str struggle with even talking about, you know, the fact that they're struggling with their finances or even if you're having pressure at work, you know, that can weigh you down a lot and even being concerned about your health problems. If you have a health problem, like a medical problem that's ailing you, if you don't talk about those things, those can cause a lot of mental health concerns. Uh, something we do see is that men are much li less likely to report mental illness or even acknowledge that it's happening. Why is that? There's so many reasons, you know, but there's this stigma, you know, that we have as men where we're not really, we don't have a safe space to talk about our feelings. It is getting a little bit better now, so I'm encouraged, but there's a stigma, uh, you know, and it's been there since we were, you know, young boys where, you know, we haven't had that space to talk about our feelings. And a lot of men have never even opened up about their mental health. So it's a little bit weird for them to talk to another human being about the struggles that they're going through. So sometimes it takes other people speaking up or maybe, you know, unfortunately, a lot of men have to hit that, you know, breaking point where they're in a crisis. And that's when they may admit to having, you know, thoughts about depression or suicidal thoughts and things of that nature. Yeah, we do have uh, a big, mm -hmm. big culture focusing on, you know, men being strong and holding it all in, tamping down yeah. their emotions. But what is the big impact of pushing all the mental health struggles aside? It's, you know, like I said, unfortunately, it's devastating because the more you push things aside, the harder it is to deal with it. You know, if you're able to catch a certain issue, like in the beginning, then you can provide somebody with the resources and it will cause maybe like, it will be a minor inconvenience. But if you wait until that breaking point, then we have a full-blown crisis on our hands and sometimes at least a hospitalization. Uh, and even that's not a bad, you know, scenario because sometimes we see a lot of men taking their lives, you know, with the suicide rate, uh, it's overwhelmingly, you know, men, you know, every three out of four suicides, uh, not just in this country, but in Canada, uh, also in Europe, uh, are men. So when men don't have a safe space to talk about these things and they wait until, you know, it's a crisis, then uh, I'm not too, you know, uh, hopeful about uh, what can happen. So the earlier, uh, the better. Yeah. And what can men do to feel comfortable in taking that first step of acknowledging that they're struggling with mental health? How can we help um, men feel comfortable and create that safe environment for them? I think the first step is to open up or to find somebody that you feel comfortable talking to. And as men, we do have a few people in our lives that we're close to. And it might be weird to open up that conversation in the beginning. But, you know, for me, even outside of, you know, the hospital and practice, uh, I've made it, uh, I made an intentional effort to speak to all of the guys in my life, you know, my brothers, you know, my father, you know, my friends, and let them know that, hey, if you're struggling, reach out to me. And likewise, you know, if I'm struggling with something, I'll reach out to them. And just having somebody, you know, have the courage to come out and say, oh, I struggle with X, Y, and Z, and this is what I do for my mental health. It's kind of liberating because when we hear other people talk about it, then we get the courage to open up about our struggles and then we realize that we're not alone. So even for myself, I've been here at ABC7 uh, talking about having ADHD. So I'll tell people, you know, I have ADHD. I take a pill every morning for it. I see my psychiatrist every two or three months. And sometimes when I'll say that, people will get the courage to say, oh, I've been struggling with this, this, and that. And I think um, I'm going to start talking to a therapist or a counselor. So uh, sometimes self-disclosure can be life-saving. That's fantastic. And, you know, we're constantly looking out for our loved ones, as you just mentioned. So what are some of the indicators uh, for men that they might need to seek help? So for men, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll overwork ourselves. And uh, you overwork yourself, you might isolate yourself. And also uh, we see a heavy reliance on substances. So uh, a lot of times, you know, the ironic thing is that when it comes to substances, whether it's alcohol or something else, it actually helps to take care of the issue in the present moment but it actually creates a much bigger problem down the line. So when you see a, a, a man in your life who's a bit more irritable, you know, he's uh, angrier than normal, isolating himself, relying on substances and overworking, 
uh, that could be a sign that he's headed, you know, in the wrong direction uh, and he might be getting depressed. So uh, when you see some of those signs, it's always better to um, intervene uh, as soon as possible. Good to keep an eye out. Dr. Sarfo, we always appreciate, appreciate your expertise here on this show. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me.